Uh, so we just finished up a big chunk of chapter 3, correct? And just took our chapter 3 test. There's two more sections in chapter 3 that we wanted to show y'all, but not necessarily give you a test over. So that's why these last two sections were not on the test. But we're going to look at them um, to kind of touch base on them, because you will see these in your future math classes. Okay? So chapter 3, section 6, transformations of graphs of linear functions. So first off, we need to talk about families of functions. A family of functions is a group of functions with similar characteristics. So every linear function is a part of the same family of functions. You can draw a line that has a pretty steep slope, a line that doesn't have a very steep slope, horizontal line, all those would be a part of the same family of functions because they have similar characteristics, correct? So our linear functions are the ones we're going to be looking at today. So all of my linear functions are a part of the same family of functions. The most basic function in a family of functions is the parent function, so what we call the parent function. All the other graphs of a parent function are what we call transformations of that parent graph. So for non-constant linear functions, the parent function is f of x equals x. So I'd have that written down and know that that's my parent function for linear functions. f of x equals x or y equals x. It's the most basic form of all my linear functions. The graphs of all other non-constant linear functions are transformations of the graph of the parent function. A transformation changes the size, shape, position, or orientation of a graph. So once again, all of my other linear functions are what we call transformations of that parent graph, that parent function. f of x equals x. Are there any questions about what we've covered so far? Am I good to move on or are we still writing? Okay, I'll give you a little time. This section of notes is decently long, so honestly, I don't expect to finish them today. So take your time, write the stuff down you need to write down. Don't rush through it. We're good on time. So other different families of functions are absolute function, absolute value functions, which we'll look at here in a couple of days. There's quadratic functions, which are your parabolas. The absolute value functions are the V-shape. But we'll, in Algebra 1, we're just going to look at the linear and the absolute value. So today and tomorrow will be all about linear, and then we'll get to absolute value. Are we good? No. Do what? No. Okay. A little more time. Once again, I would know that f of x equals x is the parent function for my linear functions. f of x equals x. Okay, moving on. So the first transformation we're going to talk about is what we call a translation. 
A translation is a transformation that shifts a graph horizontally or vertically, but does not change the size, shape, or orientation of the graph. So the graph is getting moved vertically three units, or down five units, or right two units, or left seven units. The slope is not changing of my line at all, just the position of it on the graph. Does that make sense? It's being translated so many units horizontally or so many units vertically. So for horizontal translations, you need to have this written down. This right here, and I'll write it bigger just in case you can't see that. It says the graph of y equals, actually I don't like that spot, y equals f of x minus h. You need to have that written down. And next to it, you need to have horizontal translations, knowing that that goes with horizontal translations. So the graph of y equals f of x minus h is a horizontal translation of the graph of y equals f of x, where h does not equal 0. Subtracting h from the inputs before evaluating the function shifts the graph left when h is less than 0, a.k.a. when h is negative, it shifts, shifts it left, and right when h is positive, when h is greater than 0. So if we're subtracting h from our inputs, then it's going to be a horizontal translation. Now let's talk about vertical translations. The graph of y equals f of x plus k is a vertical translation of the graph of y equals f of x, where k does not equal 0. Adding k to the outputs shifts the graph down when k is negative and up when k is positive. So these are my horizontal and vertical translations. Once again, you need to have this written down for horizontal translations, this written down for vertical translations. If you subtract a value from the inputs, it's going to be horizontal translation. If you add a value to your outputs, then it's going to be a vertical translation. Any questions there? Do you guys, did you guys see trans, or transformations in pre-algebra a little bit? A little bit? Okay. <clears throat> I couldn't remember. Am I good to move on to our first example, or are we still writing? Example one, horizontal and vertical translations. <clears throat> Let f of x equal 2x minus 1. Graph a, g of x equals f of x plus 3. And b, t of x equals f of x plus 3. Describe the transformations from the graph of f to the graphs of g and t. First thing I want to do is I'm going to graph my original function, f of x equals 2x minus 1. Does anyone remember how I'm going to graph that? Uh, the, the number without a variable is 
So what's my B value? Negative 1. Negative 1. My y-intercept, the number without a variable. What's my slope? 2. 2. How can I write 2 as a fraction? 2 over 1. So where's my starting point to graph this? Negative 1, my y-intercept. So I put a point at negative 1 on my y-axis. My slope is 2 over 1, rise over run. So which direction am I going two units? Up two units. And how many, or where, which direction am I going one unit? Right, I'm going up two units, right one, from my y-intercept. One, two, one. One, two, one. One, two, one. I can also change the signs of both my rise and my run. Go down to left one. Connect all my points with a line. So there's my original function that it gave me, correct? Now it wants me to graph g of x equals f of x plus 3. How am I going to figure out what the function f of x plus 3 is? Very good. So what kind of translation is this going to be, vertical or horizontal? Vertical. vertical translation. So my graph's going to be shifted which way, up or down? Up how many units? Three. Three. So there's a couple of ways I could look at this. I know it's my original function plus three, so I can shift all my ordered pairs up three units. So I could go to my y-intercept, go up three units. There would be that point. Just shift all my ordered pairs up three units. Does everyone see that? I just shifted all my ordered pairs up three units. So that'd be my graph of f of x plus 3, a.k.a. g of x. Another way I could have looked at this, do I know what f of x equals? Yeah. What does it equal? 2x minus 1. So what could I have plugged in for f of x? I could plug in 2x minus 1 for f of x, correct? Because f of x equals 2x minus 1. So take that f of x out, plug in 2x minus 1. Does everyone see that? And now, like you said, just combine like terms. So what's negative 1 plus 3? 2. So my y-intercept is what? 2. Did I have a y-intercept at 2? Yeah, I did. What's my slope? Two. two. Did I have a slope of two? Yep. So I could have graphed it either way. But does everyone see how it transformed it or translated it vertically? It just shifted all my ordered pairs up three. It didn't change the slope at all. It didn't change the orientation of the graph, the size, the shape, anything like that. It just shifted the whole graph up three units. So, that's actually my last part of the question. It says, describe the transformations from the graph of F to the graph of G. So, what could I say happened from the graph of F to the graph of G?
the graph of f shifted up three units to get the graph of g. So that's all of letter A. Any questions on that? Do our does our vertical translation make sense? Yes, no, maybe so? Yep. Okay. So get letter B. I'll keep my original graph on there. Maybe. So we have t of x equals f of x plus 3. Hmm. Well, based on my previous slide, is this going to be a horizontal or a vertical translation? Horizontal. Which direction am I going and how many units? To the right three. Everyone agree to the right three? Does anyone say to the left three? Is actually to the left three. Let's look at our formula real quick. It's y e or yeah, y equals f of x minus h. F of x minus h. Which makes that three and negative. Because this would be f of x minus negative three, correct? Does that make sense? So, if it's horizontal and it's inside the parentheses, you're pretty much doing the opposite of what the sign says. So, if it's a positive, if it's plus 3, you're going left 3. If this was minus 3, you'd be going right 3. Because that H value is what I'm looking at. So, this would be minus a negative 3 here. So, I'm going left 3 because it's a negative 3. Does that make sense? So I'm shifting my whole graph left three units. So I can just take all my ordered pairs, move them to the left three units. Does everyone see that? And there'd be my graph. Let's look at it the other way like we did on letter A. T of X is saying to find F of X plus 3. What's usually in parentheses right here by itself? X. So what did they replace with X x plus 3, right? They took the x out, plugged in x plus 3. So I'm going to do that to my original function. So I'm going to take my x out, replace it with x plus 3. Does everyone see that? In my original function. Took my x out, replaced it with x plus 3, just like they did. Everyone good with that? The y-intercept does change, yep. So what would I do here to get this in slope-intercept form? Distribute. Distribute. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is? 6. 6 minus 1, 5. Is my y-intercept 5? Yep. Do I still have a slope of 2? Yep. So once again, you could have graphed it either way. Does everyone see that? Any questions about my horizontal or vertical translation so far? I do, I do need to address the last thing it's asking me to find or asking me to do. It wants me to describe the transformation from the graph of F to the graph of T. So how can I describe the transformation from F to T?
The graph of f was translated left, right, up, down, left, three units to get to the graph of t. Does that make sense? So that'd be me describing the transformation that happened from f to t. Any questions there? Good on translations. So once again, if it's a horizontal translation, it's inside the parentheses. I'm doing the opposite of what that sign is saying. So if it's plus 3, I'm going left 3. If it was minus 3, I'd be going right 3. If it's outside the parentheses, I can just follow what the sign says. Plus 3 means I'm going up 3. Minus 3 would mean I'm going down 3. Okay? Let's move on. So we talked about translations. The next transformation we're going to talk about is reflections. A reflection is a transformation that flips a graph over a line called the line of reflection. Make sure we're writing this down. That way we know what each transformation is. Reflection is a transformation that flips a graph over a line called the line of reflection. So a lot of the times our reflections will just happen over our axes. So let's talk about a reflection in the x-axis. The graph of y equals negative f of x is a reflection in the x-axis of the graph of y equals f of x. So you need to have this written down with your reflection in the x-axis. Okay? That's the formula we use for reflections over the x-axis. So as you can see here, here's my original function, f of x. They're reflecting over the x-axis. So it's just a mirror image over that axis. Does everyone see that? It's just being reflected over that x-axis. Multiplying the outputs by negative 1 changes all of their signs, so that's how it flips over the x-axis. <coughs> now let's talk about reflections. And Do you have a question? Very good, yep. That's essentially what that's saying right there. So if this right here is the ordered pair 2, comma 3, well, like it says, multiplying the outputs by negative 1 changes their sign. So my y value is my output. So changing the 3 from positive to negative, it'd be right here, 2, comma, negative 3. That point's just reflected over that x-axis. Now reflections in the y-axis. The graph of y equals f of negative x is a reflection in the y-axis of the graph of y equals f of x. So you need to have that formula written down for reflections in the y-axis. So here's our y-axis. Here's our f of x, graph of f of x. It's just reflected over that y-axis. Multiplying the inputs by negative 1 changes their signs. So all my x values go from positive to negative when we're reflecting over the y-axis. So reflecting over the x-axis, the y value signs change. Reflecting over the y-axis, the x values sign changes. Any questions there? Am I good to move on? Or are we still writing? Okay. Can I go ahead and erase everything I've written? Or do we all have that written down?
Can I go ahead and move on? Example two, reflections in the x and y axis. Let f of x equal one half x plus one. Graph g of x equals negative f of x. So let's go ahead and graph our original function. What's my y intercept? What's my y intercept of my original function? What? My y intercept? One. Y intercept is my number without a variable. So one. What's my slope? One half. So which directions am I going and how many units? Up one, right two, rise over run. Going up one, right two. Up one, right two. And I can change the signs on both my rise and my run and go down one, left two. Everyone good graphing things in slope-intercept form? So there's my original function. Okay, so letter A says graph g of x equals negative f of x. So, based on my previous slide, is that going to be a reflection in the x-axis or the y-axis? If it's negative f of x x-axis, because that's what that, the reflection in the x-axis is telling me. The graph of y equals negative f of x is a reflection in the x-axis. So, if I'm taking my original function, reflecting it over the x-axis, what do you think I could do with all my points? Anyone have any idea of what we could do with our points? When we did translations, we just translated our points, either three units up, down, left, or right. What do you mean, flip it? Like, over, like the same way we just flipped. I think I know what you're saying. I'm trying to get you to use the words that we've seen on the board. Uh, so say that again. Uh, you swap the, uh... We know it's a reflection over the x-axis, correct? So could I reflect all my points over the x-axis and have them the same distance from the x-axis just going the other way? Yeah, I could. My x-axis is my line of symmetry. So for my new function, g of x, all the points are going to be the same distance away from the x-axis, just on the opposite side of the x-axis from their original point. So this y-intercept, instead of being positive 1, it's going to be negative 1. So I'm just, I'm just flipping it over the x-axis. So this one's how many units from the x-axis? Two. two. So I'm going to go two units the other way. So on and so forth. And I can do the same thing over here. So there would be my graph of g of x. Make sure your line goes through your points unlike mine. Yes? Instead of uh, doing what you did by measuring the distance, you could, uh, um, from the new uh, y-intercept, uh, put the uh, previous slope on it, except uh, since it's a reflection, make both values and then go instead. Very good. 
you're, you take me into my next point that I was about to make, I can look at this g of x, and it's saying negative f of x. It's multiplying negative 1 times my f of x, correct? So I can do that exact thing. Plug in f of x, which is 1 half x plus 1. What do I have to do with that negative? Distribute it. So g of x would equal negative 1 half x minus 1, which I'm pretty sure is what you were saying, correct? Takes my y-intercept, changes the sign of it, and then it changes the sign of my slope as well. So instead of saying puff, puff, positive, slope dude is now saying nice negative. Correct? So you can look at it either way. If you like doing the formula way, looking at it like this, plugging it in, getting a whole new line to graph, use your y-intercept, use your slope, that's great. Questions on A? Now I need to de describe the transformation that occurred. So the graph of F What happened to the graph of F to get to the graph of G? to get to the graph of G. Any questions on describing the transformation? We want to use the words reflect, translate, translated. We want to use all those words that we're seeing in our notes. Okay? Let's make sure our phones are away. I don't want them out on your desk or anything. I want them in a pocket or in a bag. Please and thank you. Questions on letter A? Can I erase and move on? Okay. I'm just going to have to erase my whole graph. And I'll graph my original function again. Letter B, T of X equals F of negative X. So what kind of reflection is this going to be? It's going to be reflected over my Y axis. So I can do both ways that I did on letter A. I can just take all my points, reflect them over my axis of symmetry, that Y axis. So, just like this. So everyone see how I'm doing that? Just taking my points, reflecting them to the other side of the y-axis. So there would be my graph of t of x. Once again, what did they replace with x here? Negative x. So for t of x, I could do the same thing. Just replace x with negative x in my original function. Does everyone see that? So, what's 1 half times negative x? Negative 1 half x. So I could just I could have done that and just graphed this new linear function. Y intercept is one. There it is. What's my slope? Negative one half. Down one, right two. Down one, right two. Up one, left two. Up one, left two. Okay. Any questions there? Yes. 
Uh, we only have like eight minutes left of class. Sorry. Any questions on reflections over my x and y axis? Can I race and move on? Now let's talk about the next transformations. We call them stretches and shrinks. So this will actually change the shape and size of our graphs. You can transform a function by multiplying all the x-coordinates, aka our inputs, by the same factor a. When a is greater than 1, the transformation is a horizontal shrink because the graph shrinks towards the y-axis. When 0 is less than a is less than 1, the transformation is a horizontal stretch because the graph stretches away from the y-axis. In each case, the y-intercept stays the same. So horizontal shrink is where it's getting squeezed in towards the y-axis. It's getting squeezed inwards. The horizontal stretch is getting pulled outwards away from the y-axis. Does that make sense? That's why it's called a stretch and a shrink. You can also transform a function by multiplying all the y-coordinates, aka my outputs, by the same factor a. When a is greater than 1, the transformation is a vertical stretch because the graph stretches away from the x-axis. When 0 <clears throat> is less than a is less than 1, the transformation is a vertical shrink because the graph shrinks toward the x-axis. In each case, the x-intercept stays the same. So similarly, a vertical stretch is being stretched away from the x-axis. It's getting pulled away from it. Vertical shrink is getting squeezed together towards the x-axis. Any questions so far about stretches and shrinks? We still writing? Okay. We good? Okay, I know this is a long day of notes. This is where we're actually going to stop. So we'll finish up these notes tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so make sure you come prepared tomorrow to finish up the notes. Um, what do you think we have for homework tonight? No homework tonight. Okay? You're welcome. Unless you have a bunch of missing work, then you need to be working on that work. Um, I'm going to be looking at assigning lunch detention slash ASD if you have a bunch of missing zero or missing works. If you have a bunch of zeros, so make sure you're getting that stuff turned in so I don't have to assign you lunch detention. Everyone good? Any questions before I stop my recording? When you say a bunch, do you mean like excessive or just here and there? Excessive. Any other questions before I end the recording?